binary stars, two stars in the cosmos that are linked in the same orbit. Michael Kogi, author of the Rise of Skywalker Jr. novel, uses the metaphor of binary stars to describe Ben and Ray's connection. He moved as she moved, like they were two stars sharing the same orbit. The bond between these two stars is so close that without the view of a telescope, the two stars appear as one to the untrained eye. Two that are one, a dyad. The relationship that the two stars share is so strong that when one star becomes larger, it will transfer its matter to the other star. Perhaps this is the very essence of the interrogation scene when Ray accessed Ben's training. Ben was a student of both the light and the dark, and Ray received his training as she entered his mind. Her skills and knowledge evolved rapidly since their relationship first formed, and according to the understanding of how a dyad works in the galaxy far, far away, the closer Ray and Ben are to each other, the more powerful they become. The novel's author, with this comparison, definitely provides rich imagery. He might even be hinting to a potential payoff for all who wanted to hear Ben say, I'll come back, sweetheart. I promise. Kogi first authored this phrase in the Force Awakens Jr. novel during Ray's forceback vision on Takadana. She touched the saber and heard the call to become the heroine of her story. After being flung through the past, present, and future, Ray must have felt disoriented, frightened, and confused. Her heart and mind must have longed for comfort, and the Force gave it to her in a voice. A voice of promise. A voice that she heard before. She stood, shivering. Deep in the forest, she heard the sounds of war. The ping of blasters. The sizzle of lightsabers. Death. Someone spoke behind her. Calm. Kind and eerily familiar. Stay here, I'll come back for you. She peered into the darkness between the trees. Where are you? I'll come back, sweetheart, I promise. Ray did not want the owner of the voice to come back. She wanted the speaker to stay. I'm here, right here, where are you? As in her dreams, she heard no reply. She continued to dash through the forest, not giving up in her search. A man in a metal mask, cloaked in black, strode out in front of her, the hilt of a lightsaber in his hand. After the Force Awakens, many Raylos theorized that this man who spoke these words was Ben Solo, a voice that Ray heard once upon a dream. After all, she immediately saw Kylo Ren as she searched for the voice. Em and I believe, and have stated several times, that they have heard and felt each other throughout their lives as their souls search for one another. The Rise of Kylo Ren Volume 4 provides support for this theory. When Ben kills Ren to become the new leader of the Knights of Ren, Rey feels coldness, a sensation often connected to the dark side of the Force. She felt her other half cross over to the dark, falling into a false persona of his own making and declaration. When she ran in the snow forest in her forceback vision, she ran into Kylo. That coldness is already associated with him. If Ben and Ray could feel each other, they could experience each other with all the other senses, with sight, feel, touch, hearing. Kylo himself shows this surprising similarity when he hears about the girl who has the droid with the map to Skywalker. He force grabs the newsbringer and inquires, what girl? His delivery of this line indicates prior knowledge, perhaps some type of familiarity with the scavenger. The sweetheart promise occurs four times in the last Jedi novel. First, Rey hears it on Ahch 2 as Luke refuses to give her the guidance that she seeks, which causes her feelings of isolation and rejection. Second, she remembers recalling it again as she thinks back to the day her parents sold her to Ankar Plutt. Third, as Kylo forces her to face the fear that her parents are nobodies, she persuades herself that voice was not her mother or father, 
It is she who whispered this promise to herself as comfort during her restless nights on Jakku. She declared that her parents coming back was a false hope. However, she ends that scene with a true hope, declaring the Force's will for Ben Solo. For the fourth time, as she left Ben on the throne room floor and escaped in Snoke's shuttle, she heard those words again. They woke her from sleep, saving her from what could have been near catastrophe. Ray saw stars, and lights, and more stars. But the stars in the viewport began to fade away, as did the lights on the console. Everything was fading, even the sound of her breathing, into a quiet, dark nothingness. Stay here. I'll come back for you, sweetheart, I promise. Jarred by the voice, she sat bolt upright in the cockpit of Snoke's private shuttle. Of course there was no one else in the ship. Those words were just an echo in her mind. Those words had just saved her, drawing her from what could have been a deadly slumber. That voice saved her. Why would these words, this voice, echo in her mind and keep coming back, even after she stated that they were words of her own doing that helped her survive? She heard them, not said them, in her forceback vision and in the voice that saved her. She heard them, not said them, as she was in immediate danger. A literal voice that speaks these words comes every time she feels abandonment, rejection, and danger. Those words and the male voice that accompanies are associated with comfort, salvation, peace, survival, and calm. Ray Carson, author of the Rise of Skywalker extended novel, had these words to describe the relationship between Ray and Ben as a dyad. We've all had that experience of knowing someone who makes us a better person. For me, it's my husband and a few close author friends. Our perspectives sharpen each other. Our reciprocal trust helps us to be our truest selves together. And our deep mutual knowing provides comfort and peace. I imagine being part of a dyad is similar, except 11 billion times more intense. In the Rise of Skywalker Jr. novel, the sweetheart line occurs twice. During the first time, it was a thought. Rey remembered them as one of her parents saying this message. We believe that Rey is backsliding into her ways of escapism by concluding that her parents are the ones that gave her this message. In context, during this thought, Rey is feeling fearful and insecure about her training and future as a Jedi. She feels alone, like no one understands her, and she has cut herself off from her dyad. This contradicts her last resolve stated in the last Jedi novel, that her parents didn't say it to her. It is something she said to herself to soothe her to sleep. She still can't remember if it was her mother or father who gave this message. Yet when she hears the voice, it comes from a man and it is familiar to her, as if she's heard it repeatedly. Most of all, she hears it, not just thinks of it, or speaks the phrase to herself, when connected to Ben Solo. She hears the voice in the forceback vision, and immediately sees Kylo Ren. She leaves Ben on the floor of the throne room, and leaves him in faith and the hope that he will come back. Then the voice comes back to save her life, as she saved Ben's life. This phrase is connected to Ben as truth, not as presumption or falsehood. Perhaps that was the very meaning of hope. It seemed false until it happened. And if she wanted to save Ben, she would have to stop Kylo Ren. When she says to herself or thinks it was her parents, it is linked to a false promise. Stay here. I'll come back for you, sweetheart, I promise. That was not the voice of her mother or her father, as she had long convinced herself. The voice was her own. She had imagined that voice and repeated those words over and over as a child until they became part of her reality, even her dreams. They had helped her fall asleep on a hungry stomach and pushed her to persevere when the future seemed bleak. When the years went by and her parents never returned to take her back, she never gave up hope that someday soon they would, and the nightmare of her youth would be over. 
it was a false hope. Maz told Ray right after she found the saber that the belonging she sought would not come from her past, but her present. The comfort of home that she sought was not connected to them. It would come from her dyad, the one that came back. She reached for the connection she shared with Ben. Ray's lips parted in surprise. It felt different now. The connection was right, good, like coming home. Ben came back again and again. He was the real hope and her home. After Sidious took Ray and Ben's life force from them and launched Ben into the pit, Ray looked up at the stars and heard the voices of the Jedi who gave her encouragement and filled her with the power to rise. Also, for the second time, she heard that powerful phrase. There were so many up there, so many stars, so many voices. Ray could not keep track. But there was a light inside her that shone brighter and spoke louder than all the others. Stay here. I'll come back for you, sweetheart. I promise. She looked deep into that light and saw there were two. A binary star. And though the voice that said those words was her own, the love behind them was not. Are these parents? We don't think so, because in Carson's novel, Ray's father was not Force-sensitive, and that is one of the reasons why Sidious discarded this failed clone. All these voices, all these stars, are voices of Jedi. Ray describes this as a light within her, not herself, but a voice within and a comfort. Shortly before Ray and Ben confront Sidious together, Ray feels and sees a light coming to her aid. And Leia saw Ben in her womb as a band of light, so this idea of Ben's aura being one of light is present. After Ben is launched into the pit, Ray searched for him. She couldn't reach him, leaving her carved out and broken. Laying there empty and alone, Ray looked at the binary star. What if she saw a representation of herself and Ben as present and future stars, him giving her his light and guidance? The Force knew the dyad was separated, both alone and both broken. Their force bond already defied the laws of time and matter when they touched fingertips. So that power is not only as strong as life itself, it is stronger than time itself. We believe Ray heard Ben in the stars that night, heard his voice, that singular male voice, call out that promise that he's made throughout her life. That promise, more than any other, gave her the courage and strength to rise up and face Sidious. And that promise was fulfilled. Ben did come back. They are the dyad, two that are one, two stars that are caught seeking each other, giving and taking from one another, orbiting around each other. After Ben gave himself to Ray to save her life, she heard his voice promising that he would always be with her. She has the text with the maps, but most of all, she has a power within her to find him and the light of his star to guide her. Hello, this is Emrys, and with Luthien, thank you so much for watching this video. We hope you enjoyed it. If you haven't already, please subscribe to our channel and click on that little bell icon that will give you notifications every time we post a new one. And of course, like, comment, and do all those things. <laughs> Peace, love, and Raylo, guys.